why some countries wear face masks and others don't by Teza Wong, BBC News, Singapore. Step outside your door without a face mask in Hong Kong, Seoul, or Tokyo these days, and you may well get a disproving look. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, some places have fully embraced wearing face masks, and anyone caught without one risks becoming a social par barrier. In other places, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, it's now compulsory. And in many other parts of the world, from the UK and the US to Sydney and Singapore, it's still perfectly acceptable to walk around very fast. Why some countries embrace masks while others shun them is not just about government directives and medical advice. It's also about culture and history. But as this pandemic worsens, will this change? The official word on face masks. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, the official advice from the W the World Health Organization has been clear. Only two types of people should wear masks, those who are sick and show symptoms, and those who are caring for people who are suspected to have the virus. Nobody else needs to wear a mask, and uh, there are several reasons for that. One is that a mask is not seen as reliable protection, given that current research shows the virus is spread by droplets in the contact with the contaminated surfaces. So, it could protect you, but, uh, but only in certain situations, such as when you are in close quarters with uh, others, where someone infected might sneeze or cough near your face. This is why experts say frequent hand washing with soap and water is far more effective. Removing a mask requires special attention to avoid hand contamination, and it could also breed a false sense of security. Yet, in some parts of Asia, everyone now wears a mask by default. It is seen as safer and more considerate. In mainland China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Thailand, and uh, Taiwan, the broad assumption is that Anyone could be a carrier of the virus, even healthy people. So, in the spirit of solidarity, you need to protect others from yourself. Some of these governments are urging everyone to wear a mask, and in some parts of China, you could even be arrested and punished for not wearing one. Meanwhile, in Indonesia and the Philippines, where there were suspicions, that there are many underreported cases. Most people in major cities have begun wearing masks to protect themselves from others. For many of these countries, mask wearing was a cultural norm even before the coronavirus outbreak. They've even become fashion statements. At one point, Hello Kitty face masks were the rage in the street markets of Hong Kong. In East Asia, many people are used to wearing masks when they are sick or when it's a high fever season because it's considered implied to be sneezing or coughing openly. The 2003 SARS virus outbreak, which affected several countries in the region, also drove home the importance of wearing masks. Particularly in Hong Kong, where many died as a result of the virus. So one key difference between these societies and the Western ones is that they have experienced contagion before and that the memories are still fresh and painful. Meanwhile, in Southeast Asia, especially in more densely populated cities, many wear masks on the streets simply because of pollution. But it has caught on everywhere in Asia. Here in Singapore, the government has urged the public not to wear masks to ensure adequate supplies for health care workers and uh, most people walk around without one. 
there is substantial public trust in the government, so people are likely to listen to such advice. In one of the only two European countries to have made masks compulsory, the Czech Health Minister says the use of masks has helped to slow the spread of the virus, but didn't offer any more scientific evidence for this. The mask as a social note. Some argue that ubiquitous mask wearing as a very visual reminder of the dangers of the virus could actually act as a behavioral note to you and others for overall better personal hygiene. Putting on a mask every day before you go out is like a ritual, like putting on a uniform, and in ritual behavior, you feel you have to live up to what the uniform stands for, uh, which is a more hygienic behavior, uh, like not touching your face or avoiding crowded places and the social distancing, said Donald Lowe, a behavioral economist, economist and professor at uh, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Then, there is the idea that every little bit counts in the world the world is waging against the virus. We can't say if face masks are ineffective, but we presume they have some effect because that's the protection we give to healthcare workers, said Benjamin Colin, an epidemiologist of Hong Kong University. If face masks are used on a lot of people in crowded areas, I think it would have some effect on public transmission. And at the moment, we are looking for every small measure we can to reduce transmission. It adds up. But there are downsides, of course. Some places, such as Japan, Indonesia, and the Thailand are facing shortages at the moment, and South Korea has had to ration out masks. There is the fear that people, people may end up reusing masks, which is unhygienic. Hygienic. Use masks sold on black market or wear homemade masks, which could be of inferior quality and essentially useless. People who do not wear masks in these places have also been stigmatized to the point that they are shunned and blocked from shops and buildings. In Hong Kong, some tablets have splashed pictures on their covers of Westerners not wearing masks and uh, congregating in groups in the city's nightlife district, and uh, criticized uh, expatriates and uh, tourists for not taking enough precautions. But uh, the discrimination works both ways. In countries where mask wearing is not the norm, such as the West, those who have do, those who do wear masks have been shunned or even attacked. It hasn't helped that many of these mask wearers are Asians. But those societies that do advocate everyone wearing a mask may have a point in the increasingly Experts are now questioning the official WHO advice. Undocumented cases. Firstly, there is some emerging there is some emerging evidence that there are more silent carriers or healthy people with the virus who show little or no symptoms than experts initially thought. In China, it's estimated that a third of all positive cases show no symptoms, according to classified Chinese government data seen by the South China Morning Post. On the time the princess, the cruise ship that docked in Yokohama, about a half the about a half of the about a half of the more than six hundred positive cases found on board were found to have no symptoms. A similar proportion of uh, asymptomatic cases has been reported uh, in Iceland, which says it is testing a higher proportion 
of citizenship than anywhere else in the world. The prevailing belief has been that uh, because these people do not exhibit symptoms, they are not very contagious. But uh, some are questioning this now. Maybe if everyone wear a mask, those silent carriers wouldn't turn into spreaders. A recently published study of cases in China found that undocumented cases of infection or those with either mild or no symptoms were significantly contagious and uh, could have re been responsible for nearly 80% 80 80 of positive virus cases. It's just one study though, and the future research will no doubt add a nuance to the overall picture. The face mask may be a product of recent history. Experience, experience with contagion and cultural norm. But uh, as the scale of this pandemic grows, along with evidence and research, our behavior may yet change again. Why some countries wear face masks and others don't? By 